Before we understand what is cloud computing, let's see what is a client server model. Here this customer wants an insurance policy and she requests that to the XYZ insurance company. And based on her eligibility, the company provides that policy to the customer. Here the customer who is the client and the company which gives her or provides the service is the server. So now this XYZ insurance company has got a small office setup, a LAN setup which has four different departments in it. Let's consider that. Customer service, accounts and admin, sales and marketing and operations or HR. All these uh, departments needs to act together to service their customers. Here in a peer-to-peer -peer model of network, any node or any computer can be a client or a server. Whichever request becomes a client and whichever provides becomes a server. Let's consider another model. Here, a client server model is that in this local area network, you have one server, one local server with all the data in it. For example, the customer data can only be accessed by the customer service person or that computer, admin accounts data by the accounts or admin person. So the sales and marketing guy accesses the sales data and operations or HR can handle employee data. This is a typical example of a local area network, a small local area network. Here the constraint or the problem is that what if this local server fails? Which means there is a one point of failure which results in the total business operation coming to a standstill and a highly vulnerable model because there is only one server. Let us consider that we have two physical servers here which services all the requests in this network S1 and S2. These servers are called clusters. Two or more servers working together virtually as one is called a cluster. And this, in this model if S1 fails, S2 can take over and service all the requests seamlessly and the business process or the productivity is ensured based on this redundant model. And that's how the company, XYZ Insurance Company, for an instance, have four different offices with the same setup across locations in four different cities. Here the constraint is that data sharing is not possible across the locations. So let's consider a centralized model here, the centralized server is managed remotely and all the location offices can access this server with the help of or the medium is the internet and they can service their customers seamlessly by acting as one big entity. So there is no one point of failure and the servers are remotely managed. This is one such redundant model here in a cloud infrastructure you can go ahead and strategically place clusters of uh, servers across locations wherever needed you can have data centers and this is virtually one centralized server for the user but physically a cloud or clusters of server infrastructure which ensures availability, scalability and reliability. When we talk about scalable cloud infrastructure, if there is a need for capacity improvement in this location, you can seamlessly add one server to that cluster without affecting the production process. That is the key. Wherever you need, you can just add a cluster or a servers or you could also add a new data center or a, a new cluster to this. All this seamlessly without affecting the production process. So in short, cloud computing is a technology that uses the internet for storing and managing data on remote servers. 
So let's take two models. If you want to deploy your own server infrastructure or you're going for a cloud environment, the advantages of having your own in-house on-premise, you have physical control over your server infrastructure. Number two, your critical sensitive data is not shared. Number three, there's no need to rely on an internet connection and it is cost effective if implemented the right way. And disadvantages of owning an on-premise or in-house server infrastructure, it requires huge capital investments for the hardware, software, etc. And you have a lot of recurring expenses like you want, you need physical space, IT team, and it is also prone to data losses at times of disasters like an earthquake or so. Hence, there is no guaranteed uptime. So now, if a company wants to go for a cloud, third-party cloud infrastructure, there is no capital expenses. You can just pay as you go model. You can just log in and, and purchase the service and go on with that. It is easily scalable. If you want a new capacity, it's easy to add it up and it can be accessed through various devices and platforms and less risk of data losses due to backup techniques. In dis disadvantages, uh, the internet speed is one key parameter for user experience and your critical data can be accessed by the cloud provider and if there is an internet outage, data access is not possible. Sometimes costs can outweigh the benefits. In cloud delivery model, the bottom of the pyramid is IaaS, IaaS, which is also called as infrastructure as a service. In the middle of the pyramid, you have PaaS, P-A-A-S, which is platform as a service. And at the top of the pyramid, you have SaaS, software as a service. Let's discuss each of these services in detail and also the number of cloud providers and their offerings. What is an infrastructure as a service and who offers it? That is all cloud service providers offer IaaS, PaaS and SaaS services. First thing is Amazon Web Services windows cloud services and we have google cloud engine in this for is which is infrastructure as a service as we know is primarily used by system admins and architects who plan and deploy cloud services for a company for aws AWS offers Amazon EC2 and Amazon S3 as their IaaS offering. For Microsoft Azure, service and storage, and also network firewalls and security offerings. In Google Cloud Engine, you have Google Compute Engine. These are the IaaS offerings of these three cloud service providers. For PaaS, PaaS is primarily used by developers to develop end-user applications and manage it. For AWS, we have Elastic Beanstalk, Lambda. For Microsoft, uh, Windows Cloud, we have Windows Azure. And for Google Cloud, we have Google App Engine. So now let's see what is software as a service. SaaS is an end-user application which is delivered through the internet and it's centrally hosted and it's called an on-demand service. Why is that? Previously, you would install a software physically in your computer, normally. But here, the SaaS is hosted in remote servers and it's accessed via the internet and in your personal computer or node you use a browser to access the service by logging in into the service as we know the customers pay through a subscription model monthly or yearly subscription fee for this so let's take up some examples for cloud delivery model IaaS is primarily for system administrators 
who deploy the service for the company. PaaS is for application developers to develop end-user applications. There will be PaaS offerings where you can develop end-user applications with that. And SaaS, that is the software wherein the user like you and me go ahead and accesses it. And for example, for IaaS, Amazon EC2 is offering for PaaS Elastic Beanstalk and Lambda. And for SaaS, let's consider our own service, Crims.com. This is a software which is centrally hosted using some of the IS offering and being developed with some of the past platforms. That's it all for now. I think, I hope that this helps to understand what is a cloud model and various terminologies in the cloud uh, computing space. Thank you for your time and have a good day. Bye-bye.